All right, so you keep you 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 sound like that was like the super thorough version of no, I ain't nervous. But explain all that damn coughing you was doing. So, it was grinding you up in the uh, comment section about all that coughing. They was all there. I'm not going to name them. They was all there, and they're staring because <laughs> they don't have no line. Really realized what I mean to my people. <coughs> and that, well, Frederick Douglass and my four times great grandfather were first cousins. They grew up together. He's the cousin Stephen that Frederick talks about. I was going to ask you about that. How you how you know that though? Was... I can't help it. It's okay. <laughs> Yo, I'm about I to shoot this. Bro. Well, that if I walked away, he might take his own life. I'm not saying he said that, but it sounded close. Ogun is my archetype. So when God created the world, it's your higher self, right? Your higher self is in heaven right now looking at you. And that's your true self. This is just a representation of the essence of who you are. Talk about the meat is of itself. <laughs> How about the God, bro? <laughs> so let me talk about this coffin situation, right, bro? Like, man, every time I come to this brother house, man, he has plenty of <laughs> cases of water, right? He got a lot of water. I'm not going to tell you where we live in. I'm driving, so I got to drive a minute to get over here. And, you know, I'm coming for work myself. I talk all day. You know what I mean? So now I'm coming for work. I got to get here on time so we can do, we can do the show. And this nigga don't have no water. He only had one bottle of water. And he said, no, bro, you can't get that. That's for Dr. Umar. <laughs> this, nigga, this nigga, I'm your day one. That's the reason why I messed the show because I ain't had no water. That's what it was. I was I was dehydrated. I was thirsty out here. And no, listen. I Dr. kept coughing Umar, and couldn't stop, bro. Dr. Like, Umar is... Quote unquote a celebrity. I keep saying that even though he don't like to be called a celebrity, he gave us like the you know the whole rundown of that. The so-called celebrity aspect of who I am. It's a double-edged sword. Why do I say that? Celebrities only have one responsibility: entertain and go home. They don't have to organize nobody. They don't have to struggle against nothing. They don't have to put their life on the line ever. They don't have to build no institutions. I have to do all four. So when people call me a celebrity, I often correct them, say, I'm not a celebrity. I'm an activist. When people say, I'm a big fan. No, you're not. You're a big supporter. Activists have supporters. Celebrities have fans. And I have to constantly remind people of that. The reason why my life is about activism and transformation. I am very much a activist and a pan-Africanist and a nationalist and a revolutionary. The celebrity side is a benefit in that it takes my message global. Anything I want to say, I know a million people are going to see it in a month, right? Yeah. That's the good thing. Yeah. Instant audience. The bad side is they see me as a celebrity. Kevin Hart does his comedy, he go home. Meek Mill does his rap, he go home. Will Smith does his acting, he go home. Jill Scott sings her songs, she go home. Joel B plays his ball, he go home. After Dr. Umar is done the lecture, he don't go home. He's on the phone all night helping parents save their kids. He's on the phone all night finding out how we're going to fight and organize against miseducation and mental health exploitation. You follow what I'm saying? He's yeah. on the phone. What are we going to do about police genocide and racism? I do not live a celebrity life because I'm not a celebrity. It just so happens that somehow, some way, through some manner, being as quote unquote controversial as I am considered I've been able to break in through the mainstream of media in a way I don't think no black activist has ever done in the history of this country give us the whole rundown of like you know why he don't want to be called a celebrity but also like you know I don't know if he said this on camera or, or I heard it definitely somewhere else where you know he 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 is like a little I don't, I don't want to say par I don't think paranoid is like the right word for it though but I, I just cautious. I, I felt cautious. I felt more comfortable giving them a closed bottle of water, yeah, opposed to like an open cup of water. This nigga tried poison. And it, it, it's, self, it's self-explanatory. You know what I mean? I felt like he would have respected them more. I still wanted to be, you know, show him like hospitality. You know, be a good host. Also, yeah, but you wasn't a good host to me. I definitely wasn't. You yeah. absolutely right. No pun intended. Because I was the that's podcast why I fucked host. The, that's why I messed the show with all the coffee. You destroyed that. Gym. You was about to die. It was yeah. grinding you up in the comments. I don't care, man. Up. Unless at the end of the day, I'm human. Them niggas probably had Corona before too. <laughs> I'm not saying I did. How that comment I'm section saying? made you feel though? Like reading that joint. Like you, what, you know what, what did you learn from that? All right. So first of all, when I first read it, like you know, when I first started reading, it, we had it was a lot of positive comments on that joint. Like, it it, it, it kind of shocked me. 
they see that people was like actually watching the show and getting the information from Dr. Umar and and also, you know, putting into the conversation that he was talking about. So I that see was one good. comment. Some girl said, "Yo, this this joint." What she say? She said, "Uh, she said this uh episode screamed Philly like between between your accents and then the uh the blue dicky." Oh my god, <laughs> I was crying, yo. Yo, no, I, I definitely yo. A couple of people telling you had a dicky set on with Doctor Umar, bro. You out of pocket, yeah. like, but it's cool though. <laughs> Ain't we wear what we wear? He don't dress no different. You see what he had on? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's I be mean, good. I ain't had a dicky on him. Go now I'm talking about Dr. Umar. Though. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. He was right. dressed regular. Like, yeah, I had a dicky set on. So what? That's professional. Like, I don't care what anybody said. Anyway, but you go through the comments. You know, for like every 10 joints, it's like two joints that ground you up, though. Like, and one, and one somebody was like, uh, well, really like rub you the wrong way with a, with a girl was like, <laughs> Dr. Umar is interviewing with two eighth graders. Like, you know what I mean? With education level of two eighth graders. Yeah. I really took that like, all right, you know, but then when you when you told me like it was um, smacking the face because like no, you were a teacher. Yeah, like you know what I mean? So don't get mad at me, get get mad at the board of education. Get mad at them. Like, you know what I mean? So they gave me my degree, you know, and, and Temple also, you know, basically they 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 witnessed me get my degree, you know, so they they basically stamp it, you know, in regular terms for everybody that's watching to the viewers. I'm just breaking it down simple terms. You get what I'm saying? But yeah, so, but they don't know me though. So when you said that, like, people are not going to know you. This is, you're only going to see what they see in front of you and make their own judgments, which is fine. Like, it's just like everyday life when you work work with people or you walk down the street, see somebody, everybody allowed to make their own judgment and have their own opinions, but it doesn't make it true. So she could say, I had eighth grade education, but she probably didn't graduate herself. You know what I mean? It doesn't make it a major accomplishment. Like, we talked about this before. It's millionaires that never went to school, but, you know, you're only going to make your own opinion, like, I guess. Yeah, so. or or rather she went to school or not, right? Yeah. I ain't even going to dig that deep into it. It's just, like, a lot of those comments and comments like that, It I feel like it wasn't fair. It wasn't fair to make. You know what I mean? Because I feel like, and even, like, those shade room comments, too. Let's talk about comments, period. Like, you know, reading those kind. Don't get me wrong. I've never been the type of dude that, like, that go on, like, those shade room comments or just basically, like, you know, that like, they'll hide behind a whole bunch of comments opposed to, like, all right, how can I say this? Y'all wouldn't post um, a, a nasty comment on under a picture that you know going to get seen, if that makes sense. Like, you wouldn't mm-hmm. post, like, a nasty comment under... Uh, a picture with two likes because you know nine times out of ten it probably gets seen. Yeah. But that same person would go take a nasty comment and post it under a picture that got thousands of comments because it'll get buried. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like it's it's easy to swing a punch when everybody's swinging, it's opposed to, to you swinging the first punch. Yeah. So it, it's like like I. Celebrities got the hardest job. We know, we know where that's, celebrities. That's, that's why I was about like, to, just I, regular people. That's like. where I was about to like um like I've never been that person to like you yeah. know to go under like shade room comments and like actually be a bully. But like you know a lot of people, I noticed that like a lot of people just be wanting to be like the funniest comment. Like that's how they get their fifteen minutes or they hour joins of fame. Like you know our our worth of fame where. They just they don't not something ten. They probably don't really believe what they're saying. They just try to be the funniest comment just to get the most likes. Mm-hmm. So like you got to take that with a grain of salt. And then another thing is like, you know, for every ten people, is four people that you know what is it? No, it's three people that like you, three people that don't like you, and it's four people who undecided so right there you know he graduated eighth grade that nigga just broke down 10 like yo I'll just let y'all know that <laughs> no because i was about to say four four then two but that's that's not the oh, correct. he broke down two four <laughs> but it's not the correct john and then you know even and i heard it you know what charlamagne the guy said he said like his dad told him that like you know you're not as good as they say you are you're not as bad as they say you are you know what i mean so yeah so taking all that into consideration or like it, it was like some common jones that that really did get under my skin too like to the point where like i felt like i had to respond back to this young lady she uh ended up commenting saying that like you know i love dr umar but how y'all from philly yourself but y'all didn't know that he was from philly that y'all had to ask him that question and like i just got so irked because like you know people they just judge you like not more so like judge you it's like People just think that like stuff be so easy, like like they they can do it them, like they can do it themselves, or or or. And we not in our in our following, not just Philadelphia. So 
you the, fo- the following is not just Philadelphia, but like more or more so like the comment that like what I responded back to her because like granted is a lot of comments that like, you know, I definitely like didn't respond back to. But this one I responded back to because I felt as though it was like a little dangerous almost because, you know, some comments like you got to put people not in a place, but you got to respond back mm-hmm. to because I feel like if I would have ignored it and I would have went back to it and that joint would have had like a hundred likes or something like that. I would have felt some type of way like, damn, I should have just addressed it. Now there's a hundred more people that agree with this stupid or unfair assessment of the episode. So basically what I responded back was I responded back real professional. I screenshotted and sent it to oh, you. Yeah, but, that, yeah. but it was just basically like responding back to like, you know, just because you know where Dr. Umar is from don't mean that a lot of people know where Dr. Umar is from. Right. You know what I mean? I knew where he was from, just like I knew the answer to more than half the questions that, that I already, already asked. asked them. Right. But it's for the viewers. But if I would have asked them only the questions that I didn't know, it would have been a 10 minute episode. Yep. But it's for the viewers because just like, you know, you follow Dr. Umar, but, you know, it's some people where it's probably their first time getting introduced to Dr. Umar. That's true. So as a podcaster or as an interviewer, like, you know, you're responsible to ask the questions that, you know, a lot of people probably don't know. Yep. So if you already knew the answer to that, just pay it no mind. Yeah. But it irked her, so she so she said what she said. But of course, like you know, we <laughs> but it, it's it, it was a smack in the face because yeah. like you know, as much time as they use to send you a nasty comment, when you respond back to the negativity, of course she didn't say nothing back. Yeah, hey, because who are you? That, you that, that saying, was that like, was ever that's like their you know yeah. Of course they they don't they don't say nothing back though. 